Acer and NVIDIA have partnered together to bring us the first ultra-wide G-Sync gaming monitor, and it's a good one. Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. We are here today to take a look at the brand new Acer X34 Predator monitor you see here next to me. This, as you can tell, is one of those ultra wide monitors. This is a huge expanse here, 21 by nine aspect ratio, 34 inch curved display. It has a resolution of 3440 by 1440. It has a rated four millisecond response time. It is an IPS screen, which is in plane switching. Um, and it has an out of the box uh, refresh rate of 60 hertz, and I mention that specifically because both Acer and NVIDIA advertise this monitor as being overclockable up to 100 hertz. Uh, that also brings up the last kind of really critical specification is that this is a G-Sync enabled monitor as well. So you'll be able to take advantage of variable refresh rate gaming on GeForce cards uh, with uh, the Acer Predator X34. Now in terms of physical design, this looks very similar to the Acer XR3041CK that we looked at a few months ago. That was actually a 34 inch curved, same specs uh, basically but it was a free sync enabled display that had a 75 hertz refresh rate interestingly out of the box the id is very similar to that you've got the same kind of stand uh, that you're either going to like it or hate it it doesn't have the ability to rotate but it does have height adjustment tilt adjustment um, and and a little bit of a cable routing here on the back as well to keep things a little bit neat uh, for the predator branding the predator x34 is a little bit darker along the bezel the the branding down here with the name has an interesting kind of unique logo to that brand as well that uh, Acer is going to be sticking with for the foreseeable future. Uh, but otherwise, these monitors are going to be very, very similar with the differences being G-Sync and FreeSync technology. Uh, the on-screen display on these is very usable. It's not as intuitive as kind of like that joystick method we've seen on the Asus displays, uh, but you can get through and get to all those things that you need to get to. Uh, the on-screen display does have one important feature that people who buy this monitor are going to want to know about, and that's the overclocking capability. So even though out of the box it ships at 60 hertz refresh rate, you can actually go into the OSD and set what the new maximum refresh rate should be. You can do it in 5 hertz increments, uh, but it goes up to 100 hertz. We've heard a couple people say that they haven't had fully stable experiences at 100 hertz but we had no issues with that and most of the people uh, that I have seen that on, on on YouTube or new egg reviews talk about driver updates fixing that as well so it's just something to keep in mind uh, but once you set the OSD to 100 hertz this is maximum new maximum refresh rate it reboots the monitor and now Windows sees it as a maximum 100 hertz refresh rate now you can actually do that on NVIDIA or AMD GPUs but you want the G-Sync capability obviously you have to have a GeForce GPU in your system for that uh, we tested overdrive on this monitor and it works very well. Uh, overdrive settings are basically off, normal, or extreme. The extreme setting, you get a lot of kind of inversion, kind of way, basically too much overdrive. You see like a dark trailing thing, uh, a dark trail behind maybe white on, lark, uh, white on dark scenes there. Normal looks pretty good. Not as good as you get with some of the smaller 16 by nine GeForce uh, G-Sync displays, but uh, still pretty good. And you can definitely tell the difference when overdrive is off versus when you have it enabled. So a, a reasonable overdrive experience, if not a substantially uh, impressive one, I guess. Uh, out of the box calibration was pretty good. Uh, and through our calibration process, we were able to get the monitor very, very uh, close to perfect kind of sRGB color standards there. If you're interested in, in getting that calibration file and applying it to your own monitor, you can get that uh, in our full review at PCPer.com. Um, Let's talk about viewing angles. Finally, it's kind of like your review of monitors go. Viewing angles on an IPS screen are pretty good. It's a little bit different when you look at a curved display, right? Straight on, uh, it's going to look very good. When you look at the top or the bottom, you're, you, you'll probably see in our pictures kind of like a half moon or a horseshoe type shape where colors look a little bit different. Uh, and that's because of the curved display. And when you tilt it five degrees below or above, uh, you start to see a little bit of shifting in that regard. But from the side, the viewing angles are actually really good as well. And like I said, from straight on, even with the curved display, it's pretty much, pretty much as, as good as you're gonna get uh, for a monitor like this. Uh, we did a lot of gaming on this display, as you uh, should do, of course. Um, and G-Sync continues to impress uh, its capability to run variable refresh rate up to 100 hertz and all the way down to, you know, one, two, three hertz, essentially. So any, any frame rate that you're running at is going to be uh, a smooth, tear-free, stutter-free experience on this. Um, you are going to need a little bit more horsepower than you might 
otherwise, because of the resolution of this, 3440 by 1440, not quite 4K, but definitely more than 2560 by 1440. So you're going to need a little bit more horsepower to get that done uh, if you want to keep your same image quality settings or kind of aim for those uh, those top level settings. Something like uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 at very high settings is going to is going to require you know 970 at the minimum 980 980 Ti if you really want to get uh, the most out of it. But gaming on this is 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 really cool. The wide aspect to it uh, I think changes a lot of things for the better. You know even if you're playing more simple games like. Uh, 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 Rocket League, for example, being able to see more of either side of the field is very interesting. Uh, for desktop and productivity use, it's very useful to be able to have, you know, four or five kind of browsers open across. Maybe you dedicate your right hand of your screen uh, to communications and, and Twitter and that type of stuff. And there's a, uh, a lot of ways you can divide up the screen. A little bit of a downside to it is if you're used to having multiple monitors, uh, the, the way Windows allows you to kind of uh, you know, segregate windows off and, and kind of full screen or half screen uh, won't work the same on a single one of these displays as it would on two 16 by nine displays, for example. So there's a little bit of, of compromise you have to make there. Uh, but I, I can easily see why the 21 by nine aspect ratio monitor is catching on in terms of popularity and basically replacing many people's dual monitor setups that they've had uh, for quite a long time. Final thing I'm gonna to touch on is price. This monitor is not cheap, guys. It's uh, gonna be between $1,200 and $1,300, depending on where you look and when you look. Um, and that's pretty pricey, obviously, for a single display. You know, if you're gonna spend 12 or 1300 bucks, that's a significant investment in your system, especially considering that the uh, AMD FreeSync enabled uh, version of this, the Acer XR341CK, that is very similar, except it has a maximum refresh rate of 75 hertz, you can buy for under $1,000 now, about $970. So you're, you're paying, $250, $250 more for the G-Sync variant, which does have a higher maximum refresh rate, 100 instead of, 100 instead of 75, which is noticeable, um, but it is a significant price difference as well. We're talking 20% of the total price of this display. If you want to see the full review, I encourage you to go to PCPer.com. We've got our pictures of viewing angles and calibration and the calibration files and more, more details on kind of the build quality and use of this display in real life so to speak, as you will. I'm Ryan Trout. We'll see you next time, guys. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.